Bergen, I first got to know you uh, three years ago, back in 2017, because I have heard about this Health 500 thing, this guy called Andy van Bergen. It's a really strange name because we got a city in Norway called Bergen, so I didn't kind of understand this. So knowing that we were going to do this this very special and crazy thing, a mass Everest thing, we reached out to you. And I mean, we, I didn't expect to get an answer. First, I pinged you on Facebook, and okay, you what? probably thought, who's that crazy in the reach and trying to get hold of me? And, I mean, but finally, I got through to you. And I mean, I was so oh, humbled wow, and, so cool, and honored by the way you received uh, what we were doing. And instead of just being... Um, being um, cautious about it and skeptical, uh, kind of to doing your thing, we, um, you just embraced it and it, it cheered us on. And that resulted in the first year back in 2017 that we had 80 riders doing this crazy thing in, in the hill in Oslo. So can't you tell us a little bit, I mean, Hells 500, it's a kind of a, a rough wording. Can, can you just give us a little little history about this, Andy, please? Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, obviously you and I met three, three or four years ago, but Hells 500 has been around for nearly 10 years now. And uh, basically it started, it was just a group of uh, friends who enjoyed riding in the hills, yeah. probably a little bit too much. <laughs> and uh, really just, it was just a few of us, a small handful uh, that we're riding every every week mm. and we'll just come up with these ideas to get each other out of bed in the middle of winter <laughs> when it was freezing cold when no one else was out it's it's actually why we wear a cloud on our sleeve right now because the cloud represents those days yeah. where it's wet and cold and no one else is out yeah. but we are so wow. so health, health 500 was always a group that was we just go and do things that were a little bit harder yeah. and a little bit rougher than than anyone else it it's a name that sounds really rough, uh, and it's actually quite funny that whenever I have to order things for our crew yeah, yeah. on the invoice, you know, the companies that I'm dealing with are like, "Are you guys? <laughs> so, so your bikies? No, 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 not not bikies. Uh, we ride bikes. Yeah. It's different. <laughs> but uh, no, we we have the most amazing crew, as as you know, know. and um, these guys are the, mo the mo guys and girls are the most incredible, supportive. They would uh, look after you all, all day. They would give you the shirt off, off their own back. And even this weekend, you'll find them coming along and, and riding alongside riders as they're climbing either Reverse Epic or yeah. Optus Swift. Yeah. It's a cool crew. So good. When did you get to meet and, uh, and learn, get to know about uh, Andy, uh, Rebecca, the first time? So the first time we've actually spoken is this week. Um, I was going to say in real life, but obviously it wasn't in real life. Um, it was with the power of the Zoom internet, um, which actually I think has been really brilliant and interesting during lockdown because I've actually probably spoken to more people around the, the globe yes. um, in the flight community than I would have done when we when we weren't in lockdown. So yeah, so the first time we actually virtually met was uh, was this week. But of course, I've heard so much about Andy and his brilliant work and inspiring so many people to Everest. And uh, I think it's never been as busy as it has been in the last couple of months. And Andy, I believe you can sign up on that because I mean, yeah, it really, really has uh, taken off. Um, uh, just to jump in there, like uh, you know, we, we, I think it was the combination of obviously people being in isolation at home, as, as we spoke about uh, earlier. But I think it's also just uh, seeing the amazing pro riders and influencers jumping on board and doing this challenge as well. And it's just it seems to have really uh, caught people's imagination and they're really running with it. It's it's so exciting. And I think Rebecca, the thing that's kind of cool is. You know, if uh, Joe or Jess from the local bike club mm. goes and does an Everesting, then everyone else in that club all, all of a sudden says, oh, I could do that as well. If they could do it, so could I. Mm. And it becomes a little bit uh, infected by that, I think. Yeah, I think it's been brilliant um, across the board, really, hasn't it? I mean, um, Geraint Thomas doing G's as uh, whip shifts for the, I've just about worked out how to say it, whip shifts <laughs> for the uh, NHS. Um, and just the volume of people, myself included, that could actually you know, sit on his wheel and and actually interact with him. And I and I think 
there's so many pro riders that just narrowed that gap and and we possibly wouldn't have had the opportunity to do that and of course the fundraising that has come off the back of it for rides like today has just been phenomenal really yeah, I think, I mean, it was mentioned earlier, but all, all the money that's been raised for NHS mm. around the world has been incredible, mm. obviously. And I think, you know, one of the things that's really fantastic about Everesting, because it is a blank canvas, it, it means charities like it Hope can jump on board and, and use it. And, I mean, there was actually, what was the number again? Because you posted on on, on Health 500 the numbers for 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 may i believe it was 1000 but was that the uh, was that everything as a total oh. or <laughs> there's even more it was, uh, over 1200 wow but the combined yeah. vfs combined virtual and in real life yeah that that's right so basically uh, throughout march and and april it was really very very much almost entirely virtual everything's yeah. And then I think, uh, you know, just this last month or two, as people have been coming out of ISO or isolation, uh, some beautiful weather like you're having. It is freezing right here, <laughs> but uh, beautiful weather there. Um, so, so people have been going out and, and doing these, you know, you know, big everything rides outside again as well. So now it's a bit more of a combination of both. But, yeah, definitely there's a lot of virtual, virtual rides in there. But even this month, I think we're up to 950 already this wow. month. It's a lot. So, so Rebecca, Rebecca will soon be on board then in the list. How did I know that's what you were going to pick up on next? <laughs> Rebecca was always on the cards. You knew that. She was. She was. I, I knew it was. I knew it was coming in the conversation. But just in my in my defence, my background is track sprinting, and uh, oh, oh, sad. That's really sad. Velodromes, uh, two hundred and fifty meters. So. <laughs> <laughs> But well, you know, the side mm -hmm. of the velodrome is 42 degrees, so you only have to do, you know, <laughs> pop up and down that a few times. Yeah, that's right. But Andy, as of now, you're just keep kind of warming up. And you, I mean, you being the Sondre, and I have said it before, and you, you're a humble guy, but I mean, we know you as the godfather of everything. I mean, you right now, you're just warming up and getting to know your trainer again. What will you, what, what distance will you be riding with us uh, later today? Have you chosen? You know, I was, yeah, I'll, I thought about it a lot, and I kind of thought that my role this weekend yeah. is, like you were talking about before with community, I've been so lucky that, mm. you know, every time I go out and do a, a virtual Everesting or a real-life Everesting, I get lots of people coming and supporting me. Yeah. And, you know, the, the last Everesting, virtual Everesting that I did, I think I started at 4.30 in the morning. I, I didn't really tell people what time I was starting, yeah. And within 15 minutes, I had people writing next to me on, online <laughs> and saying, hey, thumbs up and whatnot. And I, I think I rode maybe half a lap yeah. by myself the entire time. Mm -hmm. So my job yeah. is to do that, to, to pass oh, that fantastic. on, to pay it forward. So, We're on it. So keep an eye out. I'll try and jump and, and ride with people uh, tomorrow my tomorrow morning so in a couple of hours time yeah so do you just let us know when we in your time what when will that be for us to prepare for it so what are we now nine gentlemen it's like eight oh you, you told me seven eight nine hours something yeah. like that yeah but it, when you're t when will you do it your local time oh, i think maybe 6 a.m 6 a.m perfect perfect mm. okay I just like to talk a little bit more about the crew thing because that was what kind of uh, stunned me when I got to know about this and was was admitted into this official Everesting group because those are a bunch of caring people, Andy and Rebecca. I mean, uh, they talk polite, they cherish each other, they lift each other up. Once there was some discussion, and then the godfather Andy just said, come on, guys, let's be kind to each other uh, in this discussion. So, I mean, that is, you have created something here, because I think that so many people that are doing this, everything's now, both in and out, they are... They see the value, and you encourage that. They see the value in doing it for a cause greater than themselves. And then this, this suddenly broadens the whole thing up. I, I think I might have missed you just at the end there, but uh, I think the idea was like talking about the crew mm -hmm. and, and how they're both respectful mm -hmm. uh, of each other, but they also realize that everything is for a bigger cause. Yeah. Is, is that, did I pick that up correct? Yeah. Yeah, and again, that's, this is the fantastic thing about everything, you know, 
it's uh, it's it's likely to be one of the hardest things you do mm. on a bike in your life, and it might might even be one of the hardest physical uh, achievements that you tick off uh, during your life. Mm. It's something that, regardless of whether you do it fast or slow, you remember it always, which is which is kind of cool. And I think for that reason, it means that you know it's very easy to find a higher purpose or, or a bigger cause mm. to to attach mm. to something since you are putting so much of your mm. heart and soul into it. Mm. And you've got to remember, it's not just you riding that and spending, you know, it could be 15, 20 hours, yep. but it's yep. all the training that goes into that. And it's your support crew, it's your family and friends and everyone else that follows along with that as well. So, yeah, I think that's the reason why you see so many people want to attach uh, something more meaningful to it, hmm. which is really cool. Good, good. So good. Well, Andy, we've got a great video uh, to play uh, 